Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 323. The Daily Beast continues to do good work in the Jeffrey Epstein case. One of the very few publications that actually gets it. One of the very few publications with writers, researchers, and investigators who absolutely understand the Jeffrey Epstein case. And they also understand that when you follow the money, well, that is how you get to some pay dirt, folks. And in a new article from the Daily Beast, they're talking about how Jeffrey Epstein bankrolled this uh, foundation that has ties to another high-level politician, and that is Frenchman Jack Lang. So let's jump into this article and see what the Daily Beast has going on. Headline, Epstein bankrolled strange foundation with ties to famous French politician Jack Lang. This article was authored by Kate Bricklett, Aaron Zaleski, and William Bretterman. By spring 2019, Jeffrey Epstein was persona non grata in America. The Miami Herald had published an expose on the financier's abuse of underage girls, financier, pedophile, the Justice Department had opened an investigation into his secret 2008 plea deal, and federal prosecutors in Manhattan were quietly building new criminal charges against him. Well, was he really a persona non grata? I mean, I guess in 2019 he was, but up until then, let's not make pretend that this guy wasn't still getting shown some love, right? We know he was still donating money. We know that people weren't really shying away from him, maybe in public. But we know that he still had support behind the scenes. And we also know that Jeffrey Epstein had a lot of friends that if this never came to light, if this wasn't something that was going to affect them as far as their um, their 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 persona publicly or th their ability to consolidate more power. Do you really think they would care one bit? They don't care. If they cared, they wouldn't have been around Epstein when this shit was happening. If they cared, they would have said something. Perhaps that's why Epstein took refuge in Paris, where not everyone shunned the wealthy sex offender. French politician Jack Lang, the country's former Minister of Culture and Minister of Education, told Paris-based news outlet uh, France Info that he and Epstein attended a party for the Louvre Pyramid's 30-year anniversary in March 2019, about four months before the FBI arrested Epstein. Lang reportedly invited the sex trafficker, whom he described as a charming, courteous, and pleasant person. Oh, I'm sure. I am sure that a pal of Woody Allen's would find Jeffrey Epstein just charming and courteous and, you know, everything that you would want in a friend, obviously. I mean, he's such a good guy, right? He is such a hell of a fella that I'm going to invite him to this Louvre ceremony. How about that? Oh, convicted sex offender? Bah, who cares? Come on. All are welcomed at my Louvre party. You sick sons of bitches. The whole lot of these people, man. This Jack Lang included. If you're hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein, let me be very clear about this, okay? If you're hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein after the first go-around, after he's already a convicted sex offender, you have no defense and get ready to be eviscerated. Double barrels, nukes from orbit, and all of it. Because there is no excuse to be hanging out with a convicted sex offender, friends. Now the Daily Beast has learned that Epstein bankrolled a French organization whose executives have ties to Lang, who decades ago endorsed a disturbing opinion regarding sex with 13-year-olds and, like Epstein, is friendly with embattled director Woody Allen. Oh, let's just get the trifecta here. Where's Roman Polanski when you need him? I'm sure Roman's lurking around somewhere, maybe hiding in Jeffrey Epstein's closet. I mean, are you kidding me right now? What the hell is going on in France? I know there's a lot more to be uncovered in France, and we know that Jeffrey Epstein spent a lot of time in France after 
uh, his first arrest, as this article stated. And there is definitely more that went on there. But it doesn't seem like the French authorities want to want to move on it. Right. It doesn't seem like there's anything happening there. I would hope that with all of this publicity that's coming out um, as far as Maxwell's concerned will maybe spur the the um, authorities in France into action. The name of the group, La Association pour la Promotion de la Politique Culturelle Nationale Mene dans la NS, well, whatever, translates, here we go, this is much better, much more in my wheelhouse, folks, translate to Association for the Promotion of National of national cultural policy conducted in the 80s and 90s of the 20th century. Holy shit, that's a large name. Imagine putting that in the, the subject line of every email. Come on now, you guys are going to have to find an abbreviation for that. The group's mission, listed in French incorporation documents, is as vague as its title. To promote the major leaders and achievements of these decades' cultural policy. What does that even mean? The, co- the, the promotion of national cultural policy from the 80s and the 90s? Uh, what, French got some hip-hop groups going on down there? What do we got? Uh, uh, their version of uh, KRS-One coming out of Paris to tell us about cultural policy? I don't even understand what that even means. That is just a bunch of word salad, right? Word soup that they threw together so they could funnel some money into it, probably. It's probably nothing more than another front company. Still, Lang is renowned for his cultural sway during that era. One 2016 profile in Apollo noted, Jack Lang's appointment in 1981, with hindsight, the most decisive in shaping the form of the cultural ministry as taken today. Lang's years in charge were memorable, colorful, and divisive. Lang's policies were also providing a real boost to creativity and its free expression, the magazine noted. A New York Times piece from 1985 held Lang a superstar of French culture for his appeal to young voters. Oh yeah, I'm sure that this Lang fella is just top notch. And once you have the New York Times co-signing for you, well that settles it for me. Let's wrap it up folks, no investigation needed. Lang is obviously a fantastic man who really put his thumbprint on the cultural growth of, of France. What? Who even cares, really? I'm sure that if you asked anyone in France at this point who was below the age of 35, they'd look at you cross-eyed. Lang, give me a break. Before his, 2000, before his July 2019 arrest, Epstein's shadowy nonprofit Gratitude America lavished funds on this obscure Paris project and two other international groups, a sex clinic in Rome and a Lithuanian ballet company, a sex clinic in Rome. Unless they specialize in chemical castration, Jeffrey Epstein should be nowhere near a sex clinic, okay? Maybe his brain donated to science. Maybe he should have been lobotomized and put on display, but uh, involved in a, a, a sex, uh, a sex uh, clinic in Rome and a Lithuanian ballet company. I'm sure that the Lithuanian ballet company had nothing to do with having a quote unquote fertile ground for him and his friend Ghislaine to hunt at. Right? Nah, that can that couldn't be the case. This whole entire story is sick, twisted, and sordid, and I don't know why anybody would try and make it more salacious than it already is. It does not need any more sprinkle. It doesn't need any more condiments on top of this salad, folks, all right? It's already uh, a, a lot to eat. The French organization, which has no website or social media presence, shock, launched in 2018. The same year it received 57,897 from Gratitude America. Two of Lang's former aides are officers of the association, while one current employee of Lang's office is a representative of the group. So it didn't even kick into effect until it got uh, a generous donation, quote unquote, from Jeffrey Epstein's Gratitude America in the tune of $57,897. Where did that money originate? Was that money made from ill-gotten gains and then funneled to Mr. Lang's friends over here at this charity? Well, if so, my friends, welcome to the world of Rico. 
Jacques Renard, the group's treasurer, was deputy, deputy director and chief of staff under Lang's culture, culture ministry during the 1980s and early 1990s. Christophe de Gruel, the association's president, is a city councilor in Blois who worked as Lang's chief of staff in the education ministry from 2000 to 2002. Christopher de Gruel sounds like a bad guy in a fantasy novel, right? He's the assassin in some sort of fantasy novel that's based in the 11th century, and he's charged with murdering the French prince. That's the kind of name this dude has, de Gruel. A perfect bad guy name. De Gruel and Lang were photographed together as recently as 2018, and in a 2016 interview, de Gruel said he'd spent the last three years advising Lang as president of the Arab World Institute. How come all of these scumbags are involved in the Arab world as well? Every single time you turn around, one of these guys is involved in some sort of think tank. One of these guys, they're involved in working for the State Department, whatever it may be. All of these people, every last one of these people that were running around, buddied up with Epstein, accepting money from Epstein, hanging out with him, and helping him rebuild and refurbish his image, are all legit at the top of the list of the most detestable people going. I have two passions in life, politics and culture. I am lucky to have a balance between local public action and an activity with Jack Lang which meets my expectations, de Gruel said. Meanwhile, Fabrice Parsi is named as an agent of the group in a document signed by, by Renard Records Show. Parsi currently works in Lang's office. So, these two people that we're talking about here, Mr. DeGruel and Fabrice Parsi, are both basically minions of Lang. They start this charity. That charity is financed by Epstein's very generous 57000 and some change. And here we are. Again. Nobody knows where this money's come from. Nobody knows where it's going. And nobody is ever held accountable. Enough is enough. Florist and boutique owner Sylvie Aubrey is secretary of the association, which shares her business address in the 14th arrondissement of Paris. It's unclear whether she is connected to Lang or Epstein or how she's linked to the other men. None of the association's officers return messages seeking comment. Well, that's a shock. Nobody wants to comment on their relationship with Jeffrey Epstein, huh? Well, color me shocked. I'm sure they had no problem stashing that dough in their bank accounts, though, right? They didn't miss any sleep over that. But comments? Stop it. How dare you ask them for comments? Lang didn't reply when a Beast reporter emailed him for a comment. Instead... Parsi answered as a staffer within Lang's office, saying Lang was busy planning an event for the Arab World Institute and was unavailable. Well, uh, that you know, there it is. Way too busy. I'm busy planning an event. I don't have time to talk to you for five minutes. Ha 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 ha. That's how these people function. And that's why I'm always talking about compelling them with subpoenas. Because if you don't, they're just going to lie. They're going to be deceitful. And they're not going to cooperate. And at the end of the day... What I want is a real investigation where everybody who's involved, just like if they were in any other criminal enterprise, is brought in and put under oath. That's how this works, all right? That's what happens when you're a criminal. I don't care if you're part of polite society. If it's good for me and my peeps, it most certainly is good for you and the rest of the other vermin in the so-called polite society. Parsi did not respond to follow-up messages from the Daily Beast. Epstein was a frequent flyer to Paris. When the FBI handcuffed him on a New Jersey tarmac last year, he just returned from a trip to the French capital. And what was he doing there, folks? We all know that the French authorities aren't too interested in his behavior. So was he abusing girls there? I'm pretty sure he probably was. Was there some sort of school situation set up like he had in Palm Beach in New York? Probably was. Now, I don't have any evidence of that, right? But let's be real. Let's be real. Do you really think that Jeffrey Epstein was over there and he was on his best behavior, huh? 
He's over there in France where he basically can do whatever he wants and he's on his best behavior. I'm sorry, but guys like this can't control themselves. He was a sick, disgusting man and his proclivities certainly outweighed any other sense of of what he should be doing. And we've seen that from his behavior over and over again. So I am almost sure that we're going to hear of more girls in Paris, around France, that have been abused by this sick pervert. French authorities began investigating Epstein, uh, what? In August 2019, after he killed himself in U.S. federal lockup. The French inquiry will focus on potential crimes against French victims committed on national territory as well as abroad, Paris prosecutor and Remy Heights said at the time, and on perpetrators who are French citizens. Well, how about you guys start with Jean-Luc Brunel? If you guys bring in Jean-Luc Brunel, arrest him, get him into the system, and, you know, start the process, maybe I'll have a little more faith in you. But, just like the authorities in my home country here in America, until they arrested Ghislaine Maxwell, well, words are wind. Let's see some action, tangible action, folks. Let's get to it. Epstein's Little Black Book had multiple French phone numbers, including for interior designer Alberto Pinto, who decorated Epstein's New York mansion and met one of Epstein's survivors in Paris, and for Hotel de de Crillon, where Aubrey is the official florist. The Rolodex also contained a section titled Massage Paris, and we all know what massage means in Jeffrey Epstein's world. It's not what you and I talk about when we say massage. He's not going to Massage Envy to get a massage. He's not calling in a professional masseuse to get a massage. This means sexually abusing girls. That's what it means in Epstein's world. Police searched Epstein's $8.6 million, $8.6 million apartment on Avenue Folk and the offices of French modeling agent Jean-Luc Brunel, whom survivors, lawyers, and even his own former bookkeeper have accused of procuring girls for Epstein and who have previously been accused of rape himself. In 1988, 60 Minutes reported on claims Brunel drugged models and allegedly raped one woman while she was unconscious. Brunel has denied all of these claims. Yeah, of course he has. These have been going on since the 80s, folks, with Jean-Luc Brunel, and with everything you know about the modeling industry. And now everything you know about Jeffrey Epstein. Now you add Jean-Luc Brunel to the mix as Jeffrey Epstein's buddy, and you really think that none of this stuff happened? That he's an innocent man? That he wasn't abusing and raping people and procuring girls for Jeffrey Epstein? If that's the case, then I'd like to smoke a little of that DMT with you. Because you have to be hallucinating to not understand what's going on here. The Paris prosecutor's office told the Daily Beast it's also investigating Epstein's alleged accomplice, co-conspirator, fellow child abuser, general all-around scumbag and bipedal serpent, Ghislaine Maxwell, as part of the investigation into his suspected rape and abuse of minors in France. Maxwell is a citizen of France, where she was born and her family has homes. She also has citizenship in the UK and the US. So, I wonder if France would try and get her extradited if they ever charged her. I know there's no extradition uh, treaty between the United States and France, but I could see someone in France trying to make that move. Obviously, I'm sure the authorities in the United States would have none of it. Not at this point. Look, there is way too much... Um. Uh. uh, uh, There's too much going on around this case, right? Too many eyes are on this case. There's too much, too much interest in this case, and I think with that being the umbrella hanging over everything, it'll be a lot harder for the prosecution to f around here. After Epstein's death, the media's the media's focus shifted to Maxwell and her whereabouts. And some tabloids speculated she was holed up in Paris. Yeah, negative, not me. I never thought that for one second, I, and I said that. She wasn't running around Paris. That would have been way too easy. I, I had no idea where she was, honestly. Like I always said, I never, I don't know. I, I thought she was in the United States, but I, you know, who knows, really? There were some people that were adamant that she was in Paris going off of some nonsense. Oh, we saw her ring that she was wearing. What? No, you didn't. Stop it. 
Maxwell is being held in a federal detention facility in New York as she awaits trial on charges related to Epstein's sex ring. The British socialite, co-conspirator, child abuser, general all-around scumbag and bipedal serpent, has long denied any involvement with Epstein's sex crimes and fought victims' lawsuits accusing her of abuse. Virginia Roberts, a survivor of Epstein's trafficking ring, has claimed Epstein and Maxwell brought her to Paris and forced her to have sex with them and others, including the unidentified owner of a large hotel chain. Now, we know all of those stories. We've talked about them multiple times here on the podcast and elsewhere. But what I will say is this. Somebody like Jack Lang a big-time politician, somebody that has a pretty high profile, this dude has no business hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein. And I don't see how he can defend himself for doing so. For his part, Lang claimed he knew nothing of Epstein's unseemly history. Oh, yeah, nobody knew, like we always say here on the podcast, right? The marathon defense. I had no idea. These dudes are running their... They're on their horse right now, running their marathon miles. He told France Info he met Epstein a few years ago, when Princess Camilla of Bourbon, Two Sicilies, the Duchess of Castro, reportedly feted director Woody Allen, also a longtime friend of Epstein, at her home in Paris. That's quite the... uh, The title, huh? Princess Camilla of Bourbon, Two Sicilies, the Duchess of Castro. What do you mean the Bourbon, Two Sicilies? Why does she have... Well, hold on a minute. Pause. Why does Princess Camilla of Bourbon have any kind of hold on Sicily? What what does that even mean? Pretty sure the Sicilians don't know anything about this. Lang, 81, has defended Allen in wake of accusations he molested his daughter, Dylan Farrow, when she was seven years old. On the day Farrell broke down in tears during a January 2018 interview with the CBS This Morning, Lang tweeted in support of Allen writing, hashtag Woody Allen forever, and I love you. Yeah, it doesn't shock me, right? Birds of a feather and all, fellow travelers. It doesn't shock me one bit that Jack Lang would be coming to the defense of Woody Allen, another reprehensible scuzzball. Don't even get me started on Woody Allen. I can't even begin to tell you how much that guy's face annoys me. And to to come out in defense of him the day that Dylan Farrow comes out and says she was molested by this creep when she was seven? I mean, are you kidding me right now? Talk about having a broken moral compass. Talk about being devoid of morals altogether. Why in this strange time should we cast scorn on Woody? This results in the worst thing, economic censorship, a professional ban on a grand master of world cinema, as if his craft, as if the fact that he's supposedly a grand master of world cinema, I disagree, I think his movies are absolutely horrible, terrible, not funny, and this dude is an epic dork, by the way, all right? So, but why should his job have anything to do with that, with, with this at all? He molested a seven-year-old, according to her. That needs to be sessed out. And if people have strong opinions about that, Mr. Lang, well, the reason is because people in general don't like children being hurt. All right? So next time, for the next class, why don't you sit up front so that you can understand better what's going on here, sir? Because you're obviously an absolute douchebag. Lang told France Info when asked about the tweets, he added, I do not set myself up as a judge or a Supreme Court of Morals, but in this period, in the United States, there was a sort of witch hunt in the press in certain media. No, not really. I mean, there was, right? I, it, I, look, it was a very charged atmosphere. That's for sure. But to try and act like what Dylan Farrow had to say is not important or that it doesn't matter or that she's a liar without knowing any of the evidence just to call her a liar right away is absolute bullshit. I certainly don't play that game. Look, until I know the facts, I'm not calling anybody a liar who comes out and says they were abused at this point by these people. Are you kidding me right now? The way I'm keeping score here, we're talking in the thousands of girls who have not come forward yet. So 
uh, you know, it's, it's certainly not my role to say who's a liar and who's not. And it's certainly not Jack Lang's role to step in and call Dylan Farrow a liar. I mean, are you kidding me right now, you epic idiot? Lang is no stranger to defending accused pedophiles. In 1977, he signed a letter published in Le Monde defending three men in prison for sexually abusing 12 and 13-year-olds. Some reports said the victims were 13 and 14. Well, that makes it better, folks. 13 and 14, so that's acceptable that he's abusing them. Let's all just forget about it. Let's not even bring it up. Are you kidding me right now? This sick bastard is defending men who were imprisoned for a sexually abusing 12 and 13, 13 and 14, whatever the age is. Either way, it's, it's gross, okay? Reprehensible, the worst acts you could possibly be, possibly be engaged in. And this Jack Lang douche nozzle is going to come out and defend these dudes and, and write, assign a letter that was published in Le Monde? You should get slapped in the chiclets, my friend. Holy cow, are you kidding me? Three years in prison for hugs and kisses is enough, read the letter by French scribe Gabriel Matzneff, known for writing about his penchant for sex with children. Other signatories included French intellectuals Jean-Paul Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir. Media outlets recently called Matzniff the Jeffrey Epstein of Paris after the publication of Vanessa Springora's memoir, Consent, which alleges Matzniff began raping her when she was 14. Have you noticed that all of these guys that come out in defense of the age of consent being dropped are all the same kind of scumbag as this Matzniff dude? And I'm looking at you, Mr. Dershy Dersh, I kept my underpants on. Didn't you say the same thing, my friend? French police have asked other witnesses and survivors of Matzniff's abuse to come forward. Of Epstein, Lang told France Info, I went only once to his place on Avenue Folk for a lunch. It is true that he was often accompanied by several pretty women, but who clearly were not minors. He said he was very surprised to learn of the accusations against Epstein. Yeah, another guy who doesn't have Google, right? And how do you know how old they are, my friend? When I look at girls these days, I can't tell if they're 16 or 25. Maybe that's just Las Vegas, okay? Maybe I'm living in some kind of weird bubble here in Las Vegas. But the way girls are dressing these days on their own, you can't tell how old they are. Never mind if these girls are being trafficked by Epstein and he's telling them how to dress and how to look. I mean, did we check IDs? Did everybody, you know, did did they do an ID check? You know, so how do you really know, Mr. Lang, how old these girls were? We're doing the eye test now. So next time you you work at a club, next time, you know, somebody wants to go to a club or go into a bar or just do the eye test. Oh, yeah, you look old enough. Come on in. It's absurd. It is absolutely absurd. Asked about Maxwell, Lang claimed he didn't remember meeting her, but knew her father, the late publishing tycoon Robert Maxwell. Robert Maxwell is someone that everyone met in the years 1985-1986 during the maelstrom around the privatization of TF1, Lang said, referring to the French national TV channel. The politician wasn't the only high-profile visitor to Epstein's pied a detar, or however, whatever that means in French. Disgraced film mogul Harvey Weinstein stayed with Epstein in Paris and allegedly tried to sexually assault one of the financier, pedophiles, women during a non-sexual massage. Well, yeah, we, we heard that already, right? We went through that story, and that was their falling out moment. But up until that point, they were fast friends, it looks like, huh? Jeffrey Epstein, Harvey Weinstein, let's run around and we'll just abuse some girls together. Do you think they sat around and traded stories? You imagine these two sick bastards? Has there ever been more evil in one room together? I mean, holy cow. Meanwhile, Epstein's French butler claims Steve Bannon, oh, another gem, this drunken fool. You ever see this guy's nose? Put down the bottle, Steve, and come back to reality. Another absolute thief, another absolute con man, and another absolute scumbag. Hello, everybody. Meet Steve Bannon. President Trump's former chief strategist called on Epstein in the fall of 2018. Bannon was also spotted entering Epstein's Manhattan mansion for what Page Six described as a secret meeting. I am sure that it had to do with money. 
Bannon was always trying to come up with some dough one way or the other for one or whatever scheme he was working on, whatever sort of grifting he was up to. So I wouldn't be shocked if he was there to get some funding from Jeffrey Epstein. The employee told France Info that Prince Andrew, Microsoft magnate Bill Gates, and wife Melinda, and former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak visited Epstein in Paris too. Several survivors of Epstein's trafficking scheme say he abused them in Paris. So that would probably probably be a good place for the Parisian authorities to get busy, right? Let's let's talk about the girls who were abused in Paris by Jeffrey Epstein and let's sort that out. Probably a decent place to start. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm busy covering the case, but if Paris wants to, like, deputize me or some shit, I'm willing to come in with both guns blazing and give them a little bit of this Wild West-type style I'm working with over here because, obviously, the people in charge are, are busy eating cheese and drinking wine or some shit right now. Juliet Bryant was 20 and an aspiring model when Epstein lured her from South Africa in 2002 with promises of New York modeling jobs. In a lawsuit, Bryant says Epstein trafficked her for years, repeatedly raping her at his Caribbean compound and abusing her at his homes around the world, including Paris. Uh, Look, another sad story in the very long tale of Jeffrey Epstein. What happened to Juliet Bryant is an absolute travesty. Another young girl who had her life snatched from her, her dreams snatched from her by this disgusting monster. Bryant was forced to travel to Epstein's home in Paris, where she had to stay with Ghislaine Maxwell, one of Epstein's main recruiters of young females, co-conspirator, underboss, co-boss, general all-around scumbag, and where Epstein's assistant and co-conspirator, Sarah Kellen, forced her to be photographed nude for Epstein, her complaint states. During that trip, Juliet witnessed that young females were on call to sexually pleasure Epstein. Sarah Kellen Vickers needs to be in jail like yesterday. She needs to be brought in, she needs to be put under oath, and then she needs to be indicted if she is not already indicted under the sealed indictments. But either way, she needs to be arrested. She had such a huge role in what went on here, folks. Such a huge role. And it's, it can't be understated how crucial she was to the functioning of this operation. And not only that, she had a leadership role. So when you have a leadership role under federal law, RICO... Well, your, your term is longer and I want to, I want her to, I want to make sure that she gets that leadership role slapped on her as well because she had minions. She was ordering people around as well. And that's how it works here, right? The command structure, everybody involved in the command structure has to be indicted, has to go to prison. Just take a look at Allison Mack over in Nexium. A lawsuit filed by Tila Davies says she was 17 when the pedophile crept into Tila's bedroom in Paris and raped her in 2003. Another complaint from a woman referred to as Mary Doe alleges the trafficker, pedophile, invited her to stay at his home in Paris and arranged for her to attend a concert accompanied by a world-famous supermodel. Oh, I wonder who that could have been. Naomi Campbell, perhaps? Hmm, maybe. Anasuka DiGiorgio, a British model and actress, told NBC that Epstein abused her at his homes in Paris, New York, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. And in every location, there was this microcosm of acceptance of yes people who acted like this was normal, DiGiorgio said. How many more, how many more women have to come forward with this same story, folks, with the same message of what, what occurred? And you still have a certain group of people who don't want to believe it a certain group of really, really odd people who don't want to believe it. And you can find most of those idiots on Twitter lurking around, trying to be coy, trying to, I don't know what they're trying to do, to be honest with you, but they all remind me of those people uh, like Stan from the Eminem uh, uh, song back in the day. Yeah, they're all like Stan. So I don't even know what, what goes on in people like that's head. Anyone who could defend Jeffrey Epstein, anyone who could defend Ghislaine Maxwell, I mean, you, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand that thought pattern, honestly. I truly don't. Roberts, who was trafficked by Epstein from 1999 to 2002, said both he and Maxwell sexually abused her in France on several occasions. In a 2016 deposition, 
Roberts said she had sexual contact with Maxwell, Epstein, and a third person whose name was redacted at a hotel overlooking the Champs Elise. Afterward, Maxwell allegedly went into the city to recruit a girl for Epstein. So again, the redacted names, right? There's still a lot of those. And we can speculate. There's several people we could speculate that it could be. But I'll leave that up to you to do, right? I mean, look, at this point, we know all of the players for the most part, right? We know the allegations Virginia has made, and we know how credible they all are. So, it's on these people who have the finger pointed at them to provide some evidence saying and proving that it's not true. And in lieu of that, well, I don't know what to tell you. These people... If they don't defend themselves and they don't talk to the authorities, <laughs> the, the public is going to judge them. That's how this works. Maxwell walked up to this French girl to show me how easy it was for her to procure girls, Roberts testified. I wasn't very good at it. And you know, part of my training was to bring in other girls. So she walked up to her. Within five minutes, she had her number and that girl came over later that night to the hotel and serviced Jeffrey. Imagine, can you imagine the bullshit story this bipedal serpent was telling these girls? Absolutely atrocious, folks. I didn't see Ghislaine with her, Roberts added. I just know she told me what happened and Jeffrey told me what happened. Roberts said she was also coerced into sex with Maxwell, Epstein, and a third person at a residence in the south of France before a birthday party. Later in the deposition, Roberts said Maxwell sent her to the owner of a large hotel chain around the time of supermodel Naomi Campbell's birthday party. I was instructed by Ghislaine to go and give him an erotic massage, Roberts testified. An erotic massage. You know what that means, folks, all right? I don't need to go into the details, but we all know what massage means. Flight records for Epstein's private jet indicate he traveled to Paris often in recent years, including just before his arrest. On March 19, 2019, his plane traveled from New York to Paris and from there took jaunts to Nice and Vienna, Austria, flight logs published by Business Insider Reveal. He got around, right? And I always wonder, how's a how's a, 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 a convicted sex offender allowed to just gallivant all around Europe? I thought if you were like a convicted sex offender and you had like felonies and shit, you weren't allowed to leave the United States or something. I guess I don't know what I'm talking about there, but I know if I was one of these countries, I wouldn't be letting Jeffrey Epstein come and visit me. That's for damn sure. On April 2nd, 2019, Epstein's plane flew from Paris to New York before returning to Paris on April 19th. From there, Epstein traveled to Rabat, Morocco for a day on April 25th. He flew to New York three days later. His final trip to Paris was on June 14th. Epstein's girlfriend, quote-unquote, Corinna Shuliak, was in Paris with him before he returned July July 6th and was arrested at Teterboro Airport, the New York Daily News reported. Shuliak, 31, was reportedly the last person to speak to Epstein in a recorded phone call from jail. Boy, that would be nice to have, huh? I wonder if that phone call will ever, ever get released. That would be an interesting call to listen to. Hell, every call this guy made out of that jail that wasn't to a lawyer should be released. The trips abroad were mentioned in a lawsuit which the Attorney General for the U.S. Virgin Islands filed against Epstein's $634 million estate. Monitoring a sex offender with his own private islands and the resources to fly survivors and victims in and out of in and out on private planes and helicopters presented unique challenges and allowed the Epstein Enterprise to limit scrutiny by the government of the Virgin Islands, the complaint states. And didn't Alan Dershowitz talk about, oh, trying to uh, mock that there were helicopter flights in and out of these properties? Just another one of his uh, uh, deflections, right? Sick. When you look at all of the stuff that we have uncovered here and, and, and read here on the podcast and all of the articles that we've been over and you put the pieces together and you see what they have said in one article to the next, you can just tell these people, people are lying. Epstein, a registered sex offender in the Caribbean territory, misled the government regarding his travel plans before he flew to Paris. On March 19th, 2019, 
the Virgin Islands was notified that Epstein would be traveling to France for 10 days. His notification form did not dis disclose travel to any other countries, the lawsuit says. It was later found by law enforcement authorities that Epstein also traveled to Vienna and Monaco during, during that trip. So, again, there was no oversight of this guy. He could do whatever he wants. When you have a private jet, when you have his money, you're going to do whatever you want, and you're going to find people that are accepting of it. That's just the way it goes. The U.S. Marshal Service was investigating Epstein's unreported travel to Europe weeks before his suicide and sought assistance from authorities in France, Monaco, Austria, and Morocco, records obtained by Muckrock revealed. So according to this, the U.S. Marshals were on to him and they were investigating this bullshit because, like I said, I don't think this guy is allowed to travel outside of the country. I mean, maybe, I guess, if he, he gets an okay from the government or something, but normal people like me and you, forget it. We had a charge like this. We're not going to Canada. They ain't letting us in nowhere. You better enjoy the United States, bro. You better go on vacation in Hawaii. You ain't going to France, but Jeffrey Epstein? Bah! The most prolific child sex offender? Bah! Sick bastard, bah, come on, he can come, he has a bunch of money, so it's cool. According to the redacted documents, an air traffic controller in the U.S. Virgin Islands claims she witnessed Epstein disembark his plane with young girls on several occasions between June 2018 and November 2018. The controller said she saw girls who appeared to be 11 or 12 years old, with Epstein and in another instance, a girl who looked 16 to 18. So this guy was doing it all the way up until the time of his arrest. And as far as the airport goes, I, I know that that's it's bang on. I talked to people who used to work at the airports in Santa Fe, Albuquerque, and I heard the same thing, folks. I heard it with my own two ears about Jeffrey Epstein and how cavalier their attitude was with bringing these young girls around because they knew no, nothing was going to happen to them, especially in New Mexico, where their boy, Bill Richardson, was running the whole damn state. So yeah, they didn't have any fear of anything happening to them because why should they? Nothing had ever happened previously. Nobody had ever been arrested. Nobody had ever been really punished. So why would they think anything was going to happen to them? But two days after Epstein died, the U.S. Marshal Service closed the probe and canceled requests for assistance from France and other countries. So, look, there you have it again, folks. More, more Epstein, more intercontinental shenanigans, more intercontinental ties, and obviously a very large and vast criminal enterprise with tentacles that reached the highest levels of government all over the world. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. All right, everybody, I'll be back tomorrow morning, and we'll pick it back up then. Hope you all have a fantastic night.